honor of Batman's 75th anniversary as a protector of Gotham City, he will go down with the elite ranks of American pop culture icons that have had the honor to become a U.S. postal stamp. The stamp collection will feature multiple images of the caped crusader from artistically distinct periods across his comic book history, exhibiting the evolution of the Dark Knight over the past seven and a half decades. Let's hear it for these four amazing stamps, beautiful images, celebrating the 75th anniversary of the Cape Crusader, Batman. Batman, thank you for joining us here today. Unfortunately, uh, we just got a call. Commissioner Gordon needs you back in Gotham City, if you wouldn't mind. Thank you so much. Crime stops for no one, not even the United States Postal Service, so <laughs> sadly. Uh, a lot of people have a lot of questions about how this all happened, about how Batman was chosen to be given this unique done, honor, uh, the process of selecting these images, putting it all together. So we thought while we still have some remaining moments here this morning, we would have a little bit of a conversation circle with these four gentlemen and find out more about the process and how this all came together. <laughs> Jim, let's start the, uh, the conversation with you. Can you explain the process that the U.S. Postal Service goes through in deciding to honor a character like Batman? I mean, how did it all happen? Well, it's, uh, we try to, what we're trying to do is keep stamps relevant to, and certainly pop culture, but really to the history of the United States. And, and uh, so there's a long history. We get over 20,000 requests for stamps on a given year. And we boil that down. The Citizen Stamp Advisory Committee works with our Postmaster General to select as typically 20 to 25 stamps in a given year. So um, I think it was the 75th anniversary. As many of you know, back in 2006, we honored superheroes, and that was a great stamp selling. We printed 80 million of these stamps, so we expect this, this stamp recognizing Batman and the 75th anniversary is going to be a special stamp in this year's releases. With so many requests, how did you decide that Batman was someone you wanted to honor like this? Well, I think it, it, it goes without saying how important he is to, to the culture. You think about Comic-Con as as it exists and, and the amount of people that will walk through here in the next couple of days. Comic books are an important part of our culture. They're <coughs> part of the entertainment. They're part of the social fabric. And so uh, Batman is, is, is one of the top players, one of the, one of the big superheroes. And it was just, I think it was a natural decision to recognize him. Can we give a round of applause to uh, Greg Breeding for the work he did designing this stamp sheet? I really yeah. think it's so very, very impressive. And Greg, it must have been a daunting task for you to look back over 75 years of images of the Cape Crusader, and you are tasked with just choosing four of them right. to put into stamps. So how, do you, how do you make up your mind? How do you make that decision? That's a great question. Fortunately, the folks at both Warner Brothers and DC Comics provided me with what they thought were the best images. And even those were just a wealth of material. But the best thing was they gave me insight and uh, the ability to go into all of their intellectual property and look at all the Batman images of all time, which was a tremendous honor just to dig through all that great Batman stuff. So honestly, working with DC Comics and Warner Brothers helped us figure out the four iconic images that would both work as a stamp, but also best represent the eras we were trying to achieve. It was tough. What do you look for in an image that would be well represented on a stamp? What qualities does it have to have? Well, obviously, it's going to run at about one inch square, so it's got to work very, very well at small sizes. So even though Batman is a, is a comic book character, some of his images are very complex. 
So the first thing is got to work at stamp size. But then as, as Jim would know particularly, you really want to get the right kind of character with the right kind of tone for each of the eras. You know, Batman of the Silver Age, of course, he smiled a lot. You want to capture some of his lightheartedness. But the Batman of the modern era was a much more serious and mysterious character. So that comes into play as you choose an image as well. And Jim, you're a huge Batman fan, I know. Uh, yes. And uh, I'm sure... <laughs> well, that's I'm good sure to hear. <laughs> It's getting nervous there. I'm sure you're happy with one of the images on the stamp, for uh, sure. Sure, yeah. The, uh, but do you think these, the, these really <laughs> capture the, the iconic eras of yeah. Batman as a character over 75 you know, years? You know, we were actually talking about this before. I, I think you'd have to do like 20 stamps and you'd still be le leaving off a ton of great artists. So right. I think it was an impossible task, willing it down to just four. Uh, but these are, yeah, four great eras, obviously the Golden Age, Silver Age. Uh, the Bronze Age, and then the Modern Age. And, uh, you know, that last one is one I drew about 10 years ago. I'm very honored to be even closely associated with these greats, you know, Bob Kane, Kurt Swan, Jim Aparo. Uh, and it's Kurt Swan, I think, channeling Dick Sprang, and Jim Aparo, obviously, very influenced by Neil Adams, so I think we got those guys covered as well. But, you know, there have been so many great artists that have really contributed to the lore and look of Batman. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very honored and flattered. I mean, not just to have a stamp of my art, but also to really be associated with these uh, great talents. And Dan, I think this collection will please Batman fans of all ages and all generations because of the choices, huh? Oh, I think so too. I mean, it's, like I said, it's, it's a great representation of all the eras, but what I really want to jump on is what you said. Did you say there's 80 million stamps out there? There are 80 million stamps on sale as today upstairs on the top of the stairs we'll be selling them. And I just find that interesting to hear that this is a limited edition and you're doing right. 80 million. <laughs> right, so, right. Big country, right. <laughs> works at a different scale than the comic business. Right. So it just shows you the size and scope of what the U.S. Postal Service get, is. Get but, those little Mylar bags. <laughs> little, ba little bags and boards for every yeah. stamp here, guys. Yeah. That's what we're going to be doing. <laughs> That's a good question to you, Jim Cochran. Your 80 million stamps are being put out of these images. How many do you expect to see in circulation? Will anybody put them on envelopes? Or are they all going to be in somebody's drawer someplace? Yeah, I, I think that's a, a great question. So uh, obviously the stamp community, the philatelists, will we'll save. And, and, and I'll, I consider myself part of that. I will put some away. But I think they're an important representation of who you are as you mail. So if you're mailing a bill in or a greeting card to someone, Having a cool stamp on there it just talks about who you are. So we think the, a lot of them will be used, but a lot of them will end up in a, in a, in a safe place to be saved for, for years and years and maybe for their children and yeah. keep that interest going so that uh, 25 years from now, we're celebrating 100 years of Batman. Yeah, right. And to Jim Lee, I think this will um, become a hot collectible amongst Batman fans, even who aren't maybe stamp collectors. Having sure. this is going to be an important part of their collection, I'm sure. Absolutely. Uh, I know that I'm going to be sending out Christmas cards using my stamp. And <laughs> <laughs> that's all you're going to get from me from Christmas. Uh, sorry. Um, but, you know, it's a huge honor. And, uh, yeah, obviously, you know, if you're in a Batman, I mean, it's a lifestyle. It's not just about comics anymore. It's about uh, skin art. It's about um, T-shirts, obviously, collectibles, toys. But stamps, definitely a big part of it. And uh, very easy to store, not like huge long boxes of comics. So... 80 million, that should fit in fit nice. half a garage, I think, right? So, anyway. <laughs> Please help me thank these gentlemen for uh, helping us launch this amazing set of limited edition Forever Batman stamps today. Thank you so much, gentlemen. And thanks to everyone who came out today. Really appreciate it. Customers have until December 8, 2014 to obtain the first day of issue postmarked by mail. Affix the stamps to envelopes of your choice, address the envelopes to yourself or others, and place them in a larger envelope addressed to Forever Batman Stamps, Special Events Coordinator, 380 West 33rd Street, Room 4032, New York, New York, 10199-9998. After applying the first day of issue postmark, the Postal Service will return the envelopes through the mail. There is no charge for the postmark up to a quantity of 50. For more than 50, there is a 5 cent charge per postmark. All orders must be postmarked by December 8, 2014. And I'm Crystal Hart reporting on Batman from the Jacob Javits Center here in New York City. Thanks for watching.